Pokemon and have a complete Poke Rap play over the end credits. Please, please, Poke Rap, bring it back. Number eight, a game that's tailor made for the Switch. Oh, yeah? Tailor made for the Switch, huh? Listen, man, I am sick and tired of these BuzzFeed, Watch Mojo, whatever the heck they're called nowadays, all these countdown videos. YouTube started as a place where genuine, creative creators can take all the things that we think of every day in our heads and put them in some tangible form to share it with the rest of the world, millions of other people. It's, it's become something completely different. Let me tell you, we have all these corporations now making these very vague, list form videos and it's trickled down to us small creators. You see it every day. We have all these, oh, top 10 Pokemon in Alola. Top 10, it, not everything has to be in list form, okay? I tell you what, I am sick and tired of these countdown videos. What's up guys, Max Culture here, and today I'm counting down my top 10 things that I think we're gonna see in Pokemon Switch. <laughs> the hundreds of Pokemon videos that I've been watching in the last few months, I think that the general consensus among fans right now is that we'd like to see a Xenoblade style system where the Pokemon that we encounter can actually be seen before engaging them and that we'll either be able to avoid the aggro range of that Pokemon or simply just run up to them to initiate the battle. I think that we'll definitely see Pokemon just roaming around in their natural habitat in the overworld, but I personally think that the whole tall grass or random encounter system will persist. In the competitive scene, the way in which you acquired your Pokemon is pretty much irrelevant, but the way in which some Pokemon are more lucrative than others in the single player experience is definitely a staple in making these games great. There's dozens of examples of this, but my most recent memory of one of these is Koma O. Koma O was one of the most intriguing designs of Sun and Moon, and I remember the first time that I got to Vast Pony Canyon, and I literally just wandered around for over an hour just trying to find a Jangma O, which had a very low encounter rate. While this might sound frustrating to some, it was actually one of the most memorable parts of Sun and Moon for me because of the sense of accomplishment that I felt after actually finding it. However, if that Jangma O had just been hanging out in plain sight amongst a dozen or so more common Pokemon, I don't think that it would have been as cool or definitely not as memorable. A huge part of Pokemon lies in that feeling of wonder and excitement when you first encounter a random Pokemon, and I don't think that Game Freak is going to do away with that feeling anytime soon. So it's widely speculated that Pokemon Switch will have an open world feel, similar to the 8th generation Zelda and Mario games. While I'm not sure that this game will be as vast as Breath of the Wild, I do think that some of these open world aspects will make their way over to Pokemon, with one of the main ones being gatherable materials. Things like Pokeballs and TMs probably won't be able to be crafted, but I wouldn't be surprised if they scrapped the current potion system into something with a little more nuance. I'm mostly imagining craftable meals and potions with different attributes that could benefit you in certain situations. Imagine getting to an ice-themed gym and having to go back and farm some materials for some food that will increase either your ice resistance or maybe boost your firepower. This is barely scratching the surface of all the things that they could do with this system, but I do believe that there will be some type of collectible material system that will respawn so that you can keep crafting cool and useful items. This idea ties into my first two predictions as well. This upgraded Pokefinder would work a lot like the Hyrule Compendium in Link's Sheikah Slate from Breath of the Wild. Like I said, I think that the tall grass random encounter system is going to persist, but I think there's still going to be Pokemon wandering around their respective routes for purely aesthetic reasons at least. I think you'll be able to seamlessly switch to a camera mode to take a picture of these Pokemon and that you'll be able to track any Pokemon that you've taken a picture of. Just like in Breath of the Wild, I'm sure that you're going to be able to take pictures of those gatherable materials as well in order to track them. Ultra Sun and Moon saw the addition of the Mantine Surf and also the Ultra Warp Ride minigames, and I think that that was just the beginning of Pokemon main series minigames. 
I'm not going to try to predict the details of all those mini games because that's pretty much impossible, but the addition does seem pretty clear to me. I think that it's going to be designed similarly to how the mini games worked in uh, Super Mario Odyssey, being randomly spread throughout the world to find on your own and not just in one single place, at least initially. There's not going to be any significant reward here, but they are going to be fun, I'm sure. If we look back to the first console Pokemon game, which was Pokemon Stadium, there were over a dozen of these mini games, and I think it would be a great throwback for the first main series console game to feature quite a few of these as well. In almost every Pokemon generation, there's a few cool, major features that get left behind. Ride Pokemon will be one of those things for Sun and Moon. I always thought that the animations for the Ride Pokemon were cool, and also the gimmicks that played into the route that you acquire each of them on were pretty cool too, but I also thought it was too limiting. Yeah, it's cool that I get to swim around on a Lapras, but I really want to swim around on this Blastoise that I've been battling alongside and leveling with for the last three months, if you get what I mean. The Ride Pokemon did fix the issue of having to keep an HM attack that maybe isn't very viable on a Pokemon that you actually use, but I could see HMs coming back in a way that doesn't take space out of your limited four attack options. There's been a lot of rumors about Pokemon Switch, but one of the most prominent is about a new battle system. We don't know exactly what this is going to look like yet, and it might not change too drastically, but either way, it's probably going to change. Because of this, the current competitive metagame is going to be irrelevant. And for this reason, I think they're going to come out with a finite roster of maybe 150 to 200 Pokemon available to catch in that new region and eliminate the ability to trade over Pokemon from previous games. I do think that we'll see Pokemon from previous generations available to catch in this new region, but that they're probably going to have this finely tuned, evenly spread pool of Pokemon to introduce this new meta. As a result of this, the Pokemon Bank program will not be available on Nintendo Switch. They'll probably keep the program open for a few years to make some extra cash and also to make sure everyone gets their whole collection on one single cartridge, but we will be limited to using just the Pokemon we can actually catch in Pokemon Switch. I almost didn't put this in here as it's already been widely speculated, but I really do believe that we're going to be able to choose which gyms we start and end with. And as a result of this, all the Pokemon in the game will scale to how many gym badges you have. All wild Pokemon, all trainer Pokemon, and all gym leader Pokemon will be a different level depending on how many badges that you've acquired so far. This will make it so that if you go straight to Route 77 instead of Route 1, you're not going to be encountering end game level Pokemon. I'm sure there will be exceptions to this, such as the Legendaries and the Elite Four, but a level scaling system will need to be in place if that random gym path rumor does come true, and I think it will. Now, this is kind of a tough one to tackle, but I really hope that the game is either really tough with an easy mode, or that it just gets a good master mode for people who enjoy a challenge. It's hard to imagine what exactly they could change beyond just giving trainers more Pokemon at a higher level, but some sort of difficulty settings would be awesome. Perhaps the master mode could feature wild Pokemon with higher IVs and EVs and lower catch rates to give some incentive to playing at a higher difficulty as well. Like I said, it's tough to figure out just exactly how to make this game harder, but with the massive variance of demographics playing this game at this point, I think it's finally time to introduce some more difficulty options. Way back in September, we got an interview from Ishihara that gave us some vague details about what to expect from this game. In this interview, he says that until now, games were made as one for one person, but now you can go home and play with everyone. So how do we tackle these themes and how do we make sure it's not complicated? This means that there's going to be some sort of multiplayer focus beyond what we've seen before. While I'd love to be able to party up with random people in town and go explore the world like it's World of Freaking Warcraft, I don't think that this is a real possibility for multiple reasons. What I do see happening is something similar to Splatoon 2's Inkopolis Square. In Inkopolis Square, there are NPC characters that take on the form of other real-life players that you've encountered recently, that you can walk up to and interact with in a couple of different ways. I think that this idea of taking player characters and making them NPC characters in another player's game is going to exist in Pokemon Switch. My guess is that each town in the game will feature these real player NPCs, 
or whatever you want to call them, that you can interact with in some way. We might even see a similar system to Splatoon where you can order the player's clothes, seeing as most recent Pokemon games have actually had a bigger focus on player customization. I think that the traditional online trading and battling systems will persist as well, with this just being a cool little feature to make you say, oh, that's pretty sweet. Zelda, Mario, and even the Gen 7 Pokemon games to some extent have all taken an almost theme park approach to their design, with multiple things to do beyond the main idea of the game itself. All of these titles have also had a significant amount of story content beyond that initial single player adventure. I think that the Ultra Beasts are probably going to stay in Sun and Moon as one of those unique little quirks of that generation, but I do think that we'll get a bigger endgame story, similar to the Ultra Beast investigation in Sun and Moon, and maybe even the Rainbow Rocket storyline in Ultra Sun and Moon. Hopefully we get a good amount of that for free, but I can also imagine some paid DLC. I know that this has never happened in a Pokemon game, but it had also never happened in a Zelda game, and here we are. Perhaps that paid DLC will feature a previously unexplored part of the map, or maybe a dozen or so old but previously unavailable Pokemon to catch and use, to shake the metagame up a little bit. I wouldn't be thrilled to be forced to spend more money on this game, and maybe they'll just wait a year and come out with an ultra version like they normally do, but I definitely wouldn't count the paid DLC out quite yet. Because we still have so little details on this game, it's really tough to make some actual feasible predictions, but it also makes it a lot more fun because there's really no yes or no's yet. But either way, I just wanted to get this video out there to see how right I could be if any of these predictions do come true. We'll see. If you've got any predictions, make sure to let me know down in the comments. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed, and subscribe to my channel for the latest Switch content available. This is Max from Max Culture, and thank you so much for watching.